Located where long before the French settled, different Aboriginal peoples interacted with each other. We wish to pay tribute to these indigenous peoples, their descendants, as well as the spirit of brotherhood that presided over the signing in 1701 of the Great Peace of Montreal, a peace treaty that founded lasting, peaceful relationship between France, its indigenous allies, and the Haudenosaunee, the spirit of brotherhood at the origin of this treaty, is a model for all of us. And now, let's introduce our speaker, Joshua Benjo. It's a full professor of the Department of Computer Science and Operations Research, Scientific Director of MILA, CIFAR Program Co-Director of the CIFAR Learning in Machines and Brains programs, formerly Neural Computation and adaptive perception, scientific di director of IVADO and Canada researcher in statistical learning algorithms. His main research ambition is to understand principles of learning that yield intelligence. He supervises a large group of graduate students and postdoc. Joshua is the computer scientist who received the most citations per, per day in 2018. Finally, he has been loudly advocating for a deployment of AI for the benefit of all, and not just a few, and, as, and he was instrumental in both the organization of this workshop and other similar initiatives at MILA and elsewhere, such as the Montreal Declaration for the Responsible Development of AI. So let's have a warm welcome for Joshua Benjo. Thank you. Thank you, Margot, and um, thank you for being here this morning, very early. I think that um, this, this kind of workshop is really important, and I'm going to try to articulate a bit why. Uh, what's going on here? Right. So, uh, it's good. So, so, so this workshop is, is about making sure AI is, is used for the benefit of society at large, um, for reducing human suffering, improving social welfare and justice. And, and that has, uh, is articulated through the goals of the UN Sustainable Development uh, Initiative. Uh, you know, education, democracy, urban planning, health, agriculture, environment, and so on. Um, and personally, um, I, I, I feel like we, uh, in, uh, as researchers in AI in particular, we have a responsibility to engage in a dialogue about the use of AI because it could be, you know, something really important for the well-being of, of people in the future, but there are also concerns and dangers. So on the, on the hopes side, of course, uh, uh, you know, lots of companies and governments are very excited because of the uh, economic growth that is happening and, and it's just the beginning and what is predicted is, is, is much more which if we reduce re the wealth that will be created could mean material progress for all. Uh, it could mean you know, better ways of, uh, of uh, healing people, uh, uh, better ways of educating people and, and be being able to bring knowledge uh, through education to many more people. Um, it could mean changing our relationship to work. Um, I feel like a lot of people on this planet are working for the wrong reasons, that they're working for uh, having enough money to survive, uh, and often in conditions which are just a modern form of slavery where they're basically told what to do and, um, and shut their mouth. Um, I think uh, automation has uh, you know, potential of creating misery by, by displacing lots of jobs, but also uh, in the longer run to bring uh, a much more um, uh, psychologically and socially uh, positive uh, environment to most people. So um, on, on the negative side, uh, in addition to the, the economic issues with, uh, with work, 
one of the things that I've been most involved in is, is the question of the military use of, of AI and uh, those so-called lethal autonomous weapons. Uh, I think this, is, uh, this requires all of us who are coming from different countries to put pressure on our governments to participate in the current UN discussions to create uh, a ban for these um, killer robots. But, but in fact, the same kind of technology can be used in a Big Brother scenario, and we're seeing scary things uh, being set up in China, uh, where like face detection, for example, uh, could be used to track people all over the country. There's already 160 million cameras over there uh, tracking people. One, um, so, so these are fairly well um, talked about in the media, but one area uh, which people maybe don't talk so much about is how AI could be used for manipulating people in general. So whether this is through uh, advertising, such as political advertising or social media. I mean, in the social media side, of course, um, we had Cambridge Analytica, which has raised a bit of awareness about this, but I'm afraid it's just gonna go away from consciousness for most people. Um, and the, there's a, a deeper concern here about uh, democracy being in danger with um, these tools able to press on our buttons for uh, not just making us buy Pepsi versus Coke, but uh, you know, pushing us in directions that may not be really good for us or for society. And uh, I guess uh, a related issue, but maybe uh, often uh, something that happens without our uh, being conscious of it, are the issues of biases and, and discrimination uh, that are inherent in a lot of the data sets that companies are using. And so uh, on that front, uh, an important thing to know is that there are techniques to, to mitigate this and uh, it's gonna be important to put pressure on governments to force companies to use them. And finally, maybe one of the um, most uh, difficult aspect uh, to deal with is because AI is so powerful and it's, it's just the beginning, it's gonna be even more in the future. Um, as, as such, you know, powerful technologies tend to uh, make it easier for people that have power to acquire even more power and to lead to increase in, in power concentration. And that's true at the level of individuals, uh, you know, uh, and, and, and uh, like inequality in, 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 in wealth, but also or between countries or between um, companies. And uh, even for, I think, uh, having a, a well-functioning market, we, we, we don't wanna have just uh, one company per sector dominating uh, the whole sector. And it looks like we're going in that direction. So um, there are lots of uh, social issues and, and many more that will be discussed today. Um, one thing I want to mention is the Montreal Declaration that Margot uh, talked about briefly, that I was uh, involved uh, in, in developing over the last year and a half. It was unveiled uh, just uh, last Tuesday. And what it is is uh, the result of a consultation, not just of um, people in academia, uh, not just uh, you know, AI uh, researchers and scientists, but, but people in the humanities and social sciences, but also very importantly, um, a long process of um, um, uh, getting ordinary people to give us feedback, uh, a long process of discussion with people in libraries here in Quebec and a little bit in Paris to um, enrich the work that had been done by, by the academics. And, um, and the result is a, is a document which is articulated around 10 principles. Um, so these principles touch on different aspects by which AI and technology um, may change our world in, in ways that we need to have social norms about. So, you know, from the very general principles of, of well-being from, for everyone to uh, issues of autonomy, privacy, solidarity, uh, democracy, equity, diversity, prudence, about the technology, responsibility of people like, like me, um, and, and sustainable development. Um, let me just uh, talk about one of these principles, uh, and, and I'm just reading from the, the text of the declaration. The development and use of AI must contribute to the creation of a just and equitable society. And then uh, for each principle, there uh, are uh, a number of uh, sub-principles, if you want, so um, I'm gonna just read a few. AI must be designed and trained so as not to create, reinforce, or reproduce discrimination. 
um, AI development must help eliminate relationships of domination between groups and people based on differences of power, wealth, or knowledge. AI development must produce social and economic benefits for all by reducing social inequalities and vulnerabilities. Uh, industrial AI development must be compatible with acceptable working conditions. Da, 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 da. Anyway, so um, I think this is really interesting, and um, you can you can you can read the declaration, but you can also uh, sign sign up to say that you you um, you you are aligned with those principles and, and, and you want to promote them in your organization. So, you know, go to the website, just type Montreal Declaration AI, you're going to find it, and, and sign. So let me go back to the workshop very quickly because we started a bit late. Um, I want to mention the, um, the projects the, that um, we've been uh, studying that have been proposed. So this is the track number two. We have the, the papers and we have the, the projects. So the reviewers identified uh, and selected these, these projects that were selected under that track. Uh, so these, these are projects uh, that we are proposing for the future. Uh, and where we would like the community to pitch in. So that could be donating resources, software, engineers, hardware, people, funding, um, researchers, computation, and so on. And we, we want to take the opportunity of, of this workshop to bring these people together so that they can make these projects happen. Um, so um, you'll find the list of projects on, on the website. And um, I just want to mention uh, a few. Uh, about, for example, inferring crop pests, um, uh, dealing with uh, forecasting floods, um, uh, mapping, um, uh, again, from um, using satellite imagery to, to deal with, uh, with floods and pandemics, and um, uh, intelligent drone swarm for search and rescue operations, um, the use of uh, internet and, and phone uh, data for social good, um, tackling gender bias, using AI to enhance peer-to-peer -peer moderation and, and health forums, uh, using machine translation to create African language corpora, um, uh, algorithmic impact assessment, and, uh, and, 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 and connecting every child to opportunity using information about poverty from the UNICEF. So, uh, I, I encourage you to look more carefully at these things. So this is the schedule for today. I think you'll have it, so I'm not going to spend time on it. Um, and just mostly wanted to show the, the names and, and um, faces of the people involved uh, today and the speakers. So thank you very much. <laughs> and organizers. Yes, and the organizers that I want to thank because they did a lot of really important work. So um, we can uh, move on to the first uh, talk. What? Oh, yeah, yeah, sorry, sorry. I forgot the sponsors. Yes, uh, this would not be possible without the sponsors. So Intel, Mila, Integrate.ai, Google, Imagia, Ivado, Borealis AI, and Element AI. Thanks.